Blend modes offer a variety of powerful ways to control how layers are composited together. I'll show you how to change a layer's blend mode and also give you some examples of where you might use specific blend modes. Okay, so we're working on a 3D render here. If I move across to the layers panel, you can see I've got several different render passes. And what we're going to do is add different blend modes to these render passes in order to arrive at a nice final image. Let's turn on the first layer then, the self-illumination layer. Now to set a layer's blend mode or to change it, we can select the layer, then click the blend mode dropdown and cycle through the different blend modes until we find the one we want to use. For this layer, I'm going to use add. So add will produce a strong additive result that's more pronounced than, for example, screen, color dodge or lighten. And in this case, we're going to use it to add some self-illumination lighting detail to the scene. Okay, next let's turn on the shadows layer. So for this layer, I'm going to use the multiply blend mode. Multiply is great for a darkening effect. It's a good choice if you're compositing shadows or dark elements because the lighter pixels don't blend through. Just to demonstrate this, if I set the blend mode back to normal, we'll see the layer comprises mostly bright white detail. Okay, and there are some darker areas here. So when we set the blend mode to multiply, just these darker areas are going to blend through and give us that shadow detail. Okay. Now, for the next two layers, reflection and refraction, we're going to set a screen blend mode. So screen is similar to lighten, but it does have a more pronounced effect. Now, when I set the same blend mode for refraction, this brings about a point I'd like to make. It's a good idea to experiment with the layer opacity in conjunction with using blend modes. Here, for example, I might feel that the brightening effect on the building is too strong, and I can reduce this by tweaking the opacity of that refraction layer. Okay, so rather than using screen again for the specular layer, this time we can use Color Dodge. This gives us a stronger rendering of color information like down here because it tends to saturate the midtones and highlights when it blends into the layers beneath. For the lighting layer, we might use the Lighten Blend Mode. So with Lighten, any pixels on the active layer, that's the lighting layer in this case, that are brighter than their counterparts on the layers beneath will blend through. So just to demonstrate this, if I zoom in to where we have these banners and I just hide the lighting layer, we can see it's very subtle, but Lighten just lifts these areas. Okay, so far we've just applied blend modes to pixel layers or image layers, but we can also achieve a range of effects by applying them to adjustment layers and filter layers. For example, I will add a black and white adjustment and I'll set its blend mode to multiply. Now I actually have a blend mode option on the adjustment dialog here, which I can use to set the blend mode to multiply. So this will just blend through the darker areas of the black and white composite and it produces a desaturated darkening effect. Now, where it gets really good is that we can tweak the color contribution sliders to accentuate certain colors within our image here. And I use this technique quite frequently with low light urban imagery. It's a great way to quickly produce a moody nighttime scene. And again, don't forget to experiment with the opacity of the layer as well in conjunction with the blend mode to control the strength of the layer blending. So there we go, just a quick overview of blend modes and some examples of their uses.